What's going on guys? My name is Tech and I'm here with another base build for Rust. Before we get into that though, I really wanted to just share my appreciation for all the support I've been getting recently. We just hit 400 subs and it feels like just the other day that we were celebrating hitting 100. So I'm loving all the likes, the views, and the comments, and I love to hear from you guys all the time whenever I post a video. So if you want to make a request for a base build, or anything, uh, anything else, feel free to just drop it down below in the comments. And I would love if you could hit that like or subscribe button if you like the content and you wish to see more. Hopefully soon we're going to be having a solo survival series and get to know you guys a little bit better and you could get to know me. So with that being said, let's talk a little bit about this base. This is a pretty interesting base. It's a stacked foundation base as well as a bunker style base. And the great thing about this is it's a 2x2 two two that's going to cost 4 walls worth of explosives no matter what direction they come at. Whether they come from the top, the sides, anywhere that they try to raid in, it's going to cost them at least four walls. So with that being said, it's going to fit about three to four people. You could obviously fit more if you wanted to, but honestly, if you do it on like a trio server, this is a pretty, pretty great base for that. It's going to cost you about 68k stone, but if you farm about 30 to 40k stone, just the metal frags that you'll have left over should be enough to finish the base if you do some of it in metal, which isn't really a big deal and overall might be the way that you want to go with it. So with that being said, and after getting a good look at the base, let's just get down there and take a good tour of this base and see what's going on on the inside. So first we come up these stairs, we open this armored door, and you'll see here we have a nice little drop box just for anything you need to throw down in case you see an airdrop coming or you see some uh, enemies outside that you don't want to lose your stuff to. Over in this corner we have a nice ladder, and here we have the research table so that you can uh, duplicate whatever components that you might need. And here you see we have two ladder hatches that will give you access to the roof. Now I didn't do anything with the roof here, I wanted to leave that open to you guys. Obviously everyone has their own design, they want to use some windows or if you don't even want a roof, uh, that's pretty much open to you guys. You could build a little tower here, anything that you're thinking. All depends on what type of resources you have. But for now, let's drop back down to the bottom. And here you'll see the first stack doors. And this will give you double the door space, double the door protection just in one little spot. And now after that we got a nice shotgun turret right above us. That is going to stop anyone that does make it this far through the doors. And then we get to the main door. And we're instantly greeted by a nice little auto turret up top there. That turret is up there, just in case they get past all these defenses and they're still going strong, hopefully that turret puts them down. Now we open up these cell gates, and we drop down into the base here, and that's the bunker part. Close these doors, and you'll see we have another drop chest here. Obviously you guys can put anything that you want here, I just figured throw a little bit of extra storage in there, it's never a bad idea. And then we come into the next room, and you see we have a refrigerator, Got one of your guys sleeping bags down here. You could obviously fit a lot more here. You could probably put two or three more bags down. Got a campfire for cooking the food to put in the fridge. And then in here we have one of your first loot rooms. This is also going to keep your tool covered in the back which is nicely code locked. And you get these two small boxes along with four large boxes. So it's going to give you plenty of storage right there. And now with that done, let's take a turn down here. And here you'll see we have our handy repair bench which as you know now also applies skins to whatever items you have if you like skins as much as I do you're probably gonna want to have one of those in your base so now we take our trip upstairs to the second floor and here you'll see we have a little bit more random storage just two little boxes and through this door we get access to the turret and you'll see the turrets behind some doors just in case you want to sign off and you don't have any ammo in the turret or whatever you just want to leave those doors there and then here you'll see we have two large boxes up top and another small box along with one more large box down below this is going to be the most easy to access box in your base for raiders so this you're not really going to want to put too much important stuff in maybe just the crappy components and stuff you don't mind losing if they do raid you'll see that through these doors they actually can't see these other boxes up top so they would still have to blow that floor just to get to them. So now we'll come into our next room. 
And here we have another two sleeping bags. And along with three furnaces and another campfire. And then through here we have our last loot room. This is just four boxes, but we also have furnaces in here. And you could probably fit another small box in here if you really needed to. Yeah, you could fit a small box right there. So you can get extra storage. And like I said earlier, all the loot rooms are nicely separated. That main loot room is down here. This loot room's in this corner. And then we have this loot that's over in this corner. And with the way that our roofing is set up, with the stacked uh, roof tiles and everything like that, they'll only be able to blow down if they blow straight down into one room at a time. So if they do blow into this room, that's going to cost them four walls. And then they're going to have to go through a fifth wall to get to another loot room. Or if they go downstairs, you know. Basically, they're looking at a whole lot of explosives just to get through the entire base. But that pretty much wraps up the tour. It's fairly simple on the inside. You can probably maximize it a little bit more. I like to keep things a little bit more open so that uh, you don't get claustrophobic and everybody in the team can move around. But now that you've seen the inside and uh, I've given you a little bit of a tour of the outside, let's head all the way out there and uh, I'll show you how to build this base. Okay, so now we're going to start building this base. Now, like I said at the beginning, this isn't exactly a modular base. You will need a starter base, but all you'll need to do is save up about 9k stone, two double sheet metal doors, two code locks, and a tool cupboard to get started on this base. All you're going to start building is just a simple 2x2 two two that's three stories high and you're going to want to put the double doors like I showed them there. Now I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. Hopefully it's not too fast for you guys. Like I said, it's a basic 2x2 two two, and then it's going to be three high and we're going to put the ceiling on. It's just a square base, nothing too complicated. Now you want to put your double doors on and have them open inwards is the way that you want to do it. The one on the bottom is just temporary, eventually it will be replaced with those cell doors. And then you want to get this tool covered in here as soon as possible. Throw that code lock on there so nobody else can authorize on it. And then we can start setting up our first loot room. It's easier if you take out this floor and then you can fit those boxes in there nice and simply. And once you have those boxes set up the way you want it, throw up a double door frame and then you can throw another double door on here with a code lock just to be extra safe while you're building all this. And then if you want to, you can start laying out the rest of the loot rooms. It all depends on if you guys are happy with your starter base or if you want to actually live in here and be active. The only thing you don't want to do is fill in the third floor. We're going to need to leave that open until we get the outside stuff done. It's just so that the roofing tiles will fit on there properly. But you can fill this all up with boxes and everything like that, as long as you can move around. So now, once you're done with that, you're ready for the outside. I'm going to slow this down a little bit, just so that you guys can see what's going on, as it's a little complicated, but I'm going to speed up for the other sides. You want to come out here, make your stairs out, and then two squares and a triangle. Then go back and delete those three that you just made. And then you want to lay these triangles out just the way I show you. After I stopped falling off the triangle. Alright, so now you just put these triangles out like this. And then go back and delete those. And now you're going to want to do two more squares on the end of that triangle. And then one more triangle on the end here. And again, go back and delete those. 
Now this time you're going to do triangles all the way up to your wall. And if you're doing it right, you're going to have it glitch through the wall just a little bit, just like that. And that's a good sign. So now go back and delete all these triangles. And we're almost done here. <laughs> but it does take a little bit of time. Now, we're going to do it one more time. And we're going to put two squares and another triangle. And you put that triangle on. Delete the three. And you're ready for the last row of triangles. Now this one will get really, really close. And it should line up perfectly with the door just like that. Now all you have to do to save yourself the effort in case somebody comes along and decides to grief you and wants to break one of your foundations is just make one of those foundations stone. Don't make the one in front of the door stone. Make any of these ones uh, to the side of the door or anything like that stone. That way if someone does come along to break your twig or if you just want to like get started on it because you know that you have safety, uh, you can do that. That way you won't have to do that whole triangle square thing all over again. So once you are ready for this part, what I recommend is make sure that you have another door ready and enough stone to do a couple of walls and foundations. And so you want to pick up that door and then build a door frame up top. Make that stone or sheet metal, whatever you want to use. And then come down here, put a cell door. I like to have it on the right side for this part. And then come up here and put another cell door. Make sure the handle is on the same side as the one below. And now once you have both of those doors in, you can go ahead and you're going to want to make that stone. You're going to want to put up your airlock as soon as possible. That way people just can't see into your base. So you put up the one door and then put up the wall. And I'm going to use no clip to get all the way up there and make this stone. But obviously you're going to have to use either a ladder or you can build stairs with twig around the base and get up there. And once all that stone and you get this door on there for the airlock, you're set. You don't have to come out here, but if you have the resources, you might as well make these stone while you can. Otherwise, you can just wait, go farm some more stone. There's no rush to make those stone right away. So now to do one of the next sides, I'm going to slow this down and then we'll speed it up for the rest of them. It's the same thing, except here you're going to want to attach a foundation, then put the staircase up and then put a square and a triangle and it's going to be the same thing that we just did so i'm just going to speed this up to get through it a little bit faster and you're going to do this all the way around the base
All right, and once you're done with that, this is what your footprint should look like. At this point, you can either keep living out of the base and start saving up resources, or if you have some resources already saved up, you can move right ahead to this next part. It's going to add another wall that they have to blow through, so it'll give you added protection for fairly cheap just putting these panels on. Now this next part, you're going to want to put these floors, you can see those two walls right there, you want to put these floors like that. And same thing on the opposite side, that side wall, and they both get the floors. The gap in the middle is normal and it's fine. It'll be covered up by the roof that we put from the inside and it has no effect on the rocketing. Uh, the splash damage still doesn't affect it to the point that it saves them a wall or anything like that. It still winds up taking them four walls basically to get through. So now once you're done with all that stuff on the outside, you come inside and put these roof panels on. Now the thing you want to pay attention to here is to make sure that half of that roof is cut off by the ceiling above you. That way you know the roof panels are actually attaching to the outside walls. And those are the ones you want to do first, and you want to make them stone. Once they're stone, you want to drop back down to your second floor, and put the roof panels just above your second floor, just like this. I like to put them on every edge to make sure that you're guaranteed that the roof is going to act like the honeycomb properly, and it doesn't cost that much extra. And once they're done, you want to stone them off, and then put an actual ceiling in there. And then you just do that for all four compartments. Now putting this shelf is a little tricky here. You want to open these doors and then you're going to be able to put that shelf in there. And the one thing that I actually messed up on this build a little bit was you want to put this shelf in before you put that final roof on so that you can get in there and put the boxes on. I forgot to do that so this box winds up not fitting so just make sure when you're building it that you put those boxes down there like I showed in the tour before you go ahead and put the actual square ceiling tiles above it. But for now you can put that one box there, you can put the turret in there and everything like that or you can leave it empty in case you don't have a turret yet. So now once all your roofing's done, all that's left to do now really is set up your airlocks here, which is pretty straightforward. And then you just want to do the rest of the honeycomb for the base. I really just fast forwarded through most of this stuff because it's all pretty simple. Just put the walls down and upgrade them. This like I said earlier, you could do this as you get the resources or whenever you know that you're safe. Here you can see how we put down the research table. And we're going to put up the ladder hatches so that you have access to the roof. But other than that, everything else here is pretty simple. You're just going to go ahead, fill in all the honeycomb spots, upgrade them all to stone or sheet metal, whatever you want to do. And that's pretty much it for the build.
So while the honeycombing finishes, I just wanted to take this time out to thank you guys again for all the support and for really helping the channel grow. <laughs> Every video it seems does better and better than the last one and I can't explain how much I appreciate the support and all the kind words that I've been receiving in the comments. Like I said earlier, I'm planning on doing a solo survival and giving that a shot. And if you guys have any ideas for that or if you guys have any suggestions, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. But otherwise, if you guys enjoyed the video or learned anything in the build, I would love if you guys would hit that like button. Or if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so that you can stay tuned to the channel for more information and more content as it comes out. I really appreciate it and it really helps me more than you can imagine. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Hopefully it'll be a solo survival video or maybe it'll just be another build. We'll see when it comes to that. If you want to stay up to date with the latest information and see what I'm doing and what I'm planning for the channel, you can check me out on Twitter. My handle is the underscore technique. And I'm always posting on there uh, as far as what I'm planning on doing. I'll also post some random footprints from bases that I make, but I wind up not making a video for because I don't think that they'll be popular. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear from you there just as much as I'd love to hear about it in the comments. So with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you enjoy the build and I will catch you guys all very soon.